Coming up today, we are taking a special overnight trip on Japan's last remaining sleeper train. So come on, let's check it out together. Konnichiwa, hello and welcome back to Japan. Tonight we'll be leaving the bustling metropolis of Tokyo and heading down to a different pace of life on the smallest of Japan's four main islands, Shikoku. Tokyo's central station is the craziest railway station I've ever been to, by far. It's absolutely huge and super busy most of the time, but it all just works, and that's amazing. There is an absolute plethora of shops and food outlets selling all types of cuisine from bento boxes to Big Macs. There is also a huge travel centre where you can purchase train tickets for all over Japan or redeem your JR Rail Pass. Automatic ticket machines are spread throughout the station. These may look daunting at first, but they all have an English option and they're quite self-explanatory to use once you get over the initial shock. I'm using a JR Rail Pass on this trip, which covers the base fare for all JR trains in Japan. More on this later, but it's great value at just 29,650 yen for 7 days. As you can see here, the information boards do cycle between Japanese and English. We'll be departing from Platform 9 this evening. All of them are fully accessible by escalators, stairs and lifts if required. Did you know, every Japanese train station has its own unique ikimelo or jingle. This is so regular arriving passengers can quickly recognise their station without looking up from their book or phone. Check out my video on Shinkansen Grand Class, the best train seat and service in the world. It's linked above now. I think I'm going to need this to stay awake for a bit after a full day exploring Tokyo. And here comes our train, pulling into the platform around 25 minutes before departure time. It's Japan's last remaining regular sleeper train service. This 14-car double-deck EMU is actually two 7-car trains operating two separate services, the Sunrise Izumo and the Sunrise Seito, which is the one we'll be taking tonight. Both services run together all night and only split tomorrow morning in Okayama after travelling 675 kilometres together. Oh, 
Our train is a JR Series 285, the only multiple unit double decker sleeper train in the world. These entered service in 1998 and have a maximum speed of 130 km an hour. Level boarding is available and the accessible cabins and toilets are located just inside the entrance doors to the right and left hand sides of this shot respectively. I'll be in coach 6, cabin 6 tonight, a lower deck class B single cabin. This is the middle level of accommodation on the train. I'll show you the others once we get going. In true Japanese style, it may not be big, but it is super cosy, functional and immaculately clean. Let's check out our route down to Takamatsu on the island of Shikoku. We depart precisely on time at 21.50. The route tonight is 805 kilometres and is scheduled to take us 9 hours and 37 minutes of travel time, arriving at 07.27 tomorrow morning. As I mentioned, the base fare of 11,540 yen is covered by the JR Pass. So I had to pay the limited express and accommodation supplements, which came to a total of 11,000 yen. So I basically saved 50% with a JR Pass than if I had paid cash for this trip. You can take this train without paying any supplements on the JR Pass, with the most basic knobby knobby hard sleeper accommodation. The link is below for the full price list. OK, time to have a look around one of the Class B single compartments, the most common type on this train. The bed is 196cm by 70cm and comes with a really comfy memory foam mattress. Pyjamas, a soft pillow and duvet are provided. The room has a small litter bin, an ashtray and one power socket. Slippers are also provided. This panel on the wall controls the announcement volume, radio, lights and alarm clock. There is also a coat hanger and a coat hook on the wall. The door can be locked from the inside like this or from the outside with a four digit pin code that you select yourself. There are no catering facilities on this train except a cold drinks vending machine so I brought my own stash tonight. I really do love these little compartments, they have everything you need to enjoy the short overnight journey in total comfort and privacy. This platform level view is also very cool. By the way, there is no Wi-Fi, but the 4G signal was strong throughout the whole trip. If you want to experience another cool way of night travel in Japan, then check out this video. It's linked above now. Each coach has a couple of separate wash basins and toilets.
These were all immaculately clean throughout the whole trip. They were also fully working and stocked up with all the necessities. A great job done by the JR onboard staff. Here is a look at the Nobby Nobby accommodation. It's basically a two-tier hard carpeted floor and you are provided with clean sheets. Would you sleep here? Leave me a comment below. There is also a two-person bunk bed version of my room. And this is the Class A Deluxe single, the best room on the train. They sell out really quickly as there are only six in total. It has a wash basin, desk and comes with an amenity kit. Here is a look at the drinks and shower token machines. I'll explain the shower situation in a bit. There is also a small lounge area where you can sit and eat the food you brought or socialise with other passengers. I'm going to have my snacks and a beer and then settle down for the night, so I'll see you in the morning. If you want ad-free, early access to every video, great perks and to help me do bigger and better reviews, then become a channel member from just £1.99 per month. Just click the link above now or in the description of every video or the join button below. Thank you! Good morning, I slept really well, probably for around 6 hours. The beds were comfy and the ride quality was excellent. All announcements are made in Japanese and then the important ones are repeated in English too. It's now around 06.30 and we arrive at Okayama. It is here that we will detach from the Sunrise Izumo, which will carry on three hours north to Izumoshi in the Shimane Prefecture. Let's talk about the showers. There is a finite number of 6 minute shower cards available due to limited water on board. These are available from the previously seen vending machine and sell out very fast, so do be quick if you want one. However, the single deluxe rooms come with a free one, so you will always get a shower if you travel in this room. There's nothing I find more relaxing than listening to the clickety-clack of train wheels while lying in a sleeper train bed. Kojima is our last stop on Japan's main island of Honshu. Now we get some amazing train window views as we cross the Sito Bridge from the mainland to Shikoku. Now the Sunrise Express is certainly living up to its name. I'll just let you enjoy this spectacular crossing in full.
As our amazing overnight journey is now coming to an end, let me summarise my experience on the Sunrise Sita sleeper train from Tokyo to Takamatsu. It was pretty much perfect. Super comfortable, great value and a very efficient way to travel to Shikoku. It's a shame that Japan has got rid of all other regular sleeper trains, it's such a great way to travel. And yes, I'm aware you can make this trip in less than half the time using a Shinkansen and a local train, but it is a similar price and you don't get a hotel room for the night. We arrive on time to the minute. I also love the sophisticated red and cream livery of the Sunrise trains. What is your favourite sleeper train livery? Adjacent is the JR Marine Liner Limited Express service. I will have a video coming up on this train soon. Have you been on any exciting Japanese trains before? Which route did you do? Leave me a comment below. By the way, I'm always open to new video ideas, so leave me a comment or a DM on Instagram or Twitter if there's anything you really want to see on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe as I publish a new review every Friday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.